Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4, Kaiserreich as Ukraine. Let's continue where we last left off. So, we have... Or we are inviting Crew Chef to government. Shouldn't take too, too long for us to kind of make our way straight down to the bottom here. Because, again, you just kind of speed your way straight through this. Maloney trying the Reich's Pact. That's fine. Okay. Not a big deal. Anyways, we have to basically do this focus tree before anything else happens. You're not allowed to do anything else. And the Dutch have also joined the Reich's Pact. That's actually... These are looking pretty well for the Reich's Pact. Which, uh, coincidentally, is really bad for us. Because we are not going to be part of the Reich's Pact. Uh, we still have, like, no manpower, which is an issue. Because we've got the negative 25 we got from the Hetman army. Does getting the red Hetman... Remove that. I'm not too sure, actually. Popular front, language issues. I don't see it. I'm not too sure. Um, You know what? It might actually be in the Ukrainian army that gets rid of it. No, two, 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 mobile warfare, reorganize. Okay, no, we have to get down to reorganize army. That's actually, like, pretty far down the focus tree to get rid of a 20% division recovery rate, population recruitment factors. Yeah, not great. But hopefully that can be uh, resolved soon. So Poland has 11 to 14 divisions. Could I just fly on you right away? No, we need to get up to 80%. 75% and we're currently at 8% world tension. So no, unfortunately, that is off the table for now. Even though they'd be a very easy and juicy target for us to try to uh, take over. Oh, and the Russian Civil War is about to begin. So we got Bukharin, we have uh, Vrangel, and of course we are going to support Soviets. We got negative 30, different ideology. Okay, we're, we are still technically auth uh, authoritarian democratic. Need to be at war. Understandable. And also, we don't have enough troops. We can deploy one division just so we can reach our 20 limit. And do we want to support the Soviet Union? Of course we do. Uh, they'll definitely help us out. How many men can I send to you, though? I can send a single division. Who's my best division? But what is it an infantry or a motorized? 44, 10, 136, 54, 9, 198. With less breakthrough, no, we'll definitely send in the armor the motorized division. Do we have anybody who's good with them? Hill fighters, max planning. We'll send in the best dude we have. Uh, so we're going to send you volunteers, send in our single division. The Khrushchev speech. As one of the uh, few social democrats in the Rada, Nikola Khrushchev wields an mesmerizing degree of influence over the Ukrainian peasantry and urban rabble. He has taken advantage of our troubles in a recent speech where he has openly called for sweeping land reforms, an extension of the electoral franchise, and an end to landlord dominance in the countryside. Uh, these demands are extremely popular among the lower classes and are giving them ideas... And giving them ideas dangerous to national stability. Despite this, perhaps we should make use of Khrushchev's popularity and allow him to become the face of economic reforms, unpopular amongst the rural landlords, uh, that will otherwise take a little bit over. So, so syndicalism goes up by 40%. Uh, everybody who's not... Everybody in our faction doesn't like us. We also get 20% stability, which is nice. So we are now syndicalist. Oh, no, we can actually do New Ukrainian Army now. Okay. Um, do I want to do it now? I don't... I mean, how, how quickly can we get down to here? I think it's four focuses no matter what. I said that's not, not true. Peasant Army would be, uh, five. Got for every man. Land doctrine, not bad. They're all two times 100%. Bonus infantry equipment, bonus land doctrine. 
I think there's... Pretty far our grand battle plan. Maybe we'll go for a grand battle plan, because I... No, no, this is one of the following. We're definitely not going to go for the motorized. I don't think that's fine. That, that's fine. Probably in Circle Nation. That would take us a while, though. Well, we still have until round 1939 to get all the stuff done. So I think we're just going to go for Red Headman first. Get the extra research slot. Because this one down here is, I don't think, good at all, really. At least it's not that important. And I want to get stability up. Go for the popular front. So now you should like us a little bit more. Because we should be similar ideology. But I think it resets at the beginning of a day. Okay, and they're replacing some of the guys in government. That's fine. Yeah, so now you like us a lot. Plus 103. Russian Civil War. Finland's declared war on the Russian uh, Republic. Let's try and take some territory. And surprisingly, actually, we like them. They don't like us. You still like me a lot. Different ideology, Khrushchev and power. Yeah, I feel like for a lot of people who design focuses in Hearts of Iron 4 mods, they get this relationship wrong, where instead of Germany liking us like because we have Khrushchev, we like Germany less. Which I think is working a little bit backwards. Uh, so where do I want to send this one division? Let's send him... Down to here. Basically, we're going to do what we did when we played as a commune of France. We're going to try to close this gap up. I think that makes the most amount of sense for now. Try to split independence. Good for them. So we are at... Probably about equal. But of course, you know, this something to do with Finland. Uh, Don Kuban and Alash also could, I think, get involved. And possibly also the Japanese. And Transmere. Uh, there, there's a lot of people who could get involved in the Russian Civil War. Anyway, as long as the Soviets win, that's what we're looking for. Got France over here. Austria, of course, eventually is going to intervene. Once we get involved into the Second World Creek, and, um... We join the international. Our front line is going to be like all of this. Which is going to be a, a large chunk of our country is going to be a front line, which is not great. We need we need to keep deploying more and more troops. Uh, are we building tanks right now? Yes, we're building World Creek air tanks. We're going to build two heavy two armor divisions as well. Now try your best. If we attack you, does that also attack the German? It does. So we're actually fighting our faction leader right now. You know, releasing a little bit of pent-up aggression. Got mechanical computing. Uh, let's go for... No, 1936. It's almost 1937, though, so we can get some of the next-level techs here. Yes, and I'm glad to see the Russians trying to attack every single front at the exact same time. That's going to weaken them significantly. But I don't think the AI can really deal with that many front lines at once. Okay, Mexico's joining the Entente. Did they go for the military junta? I think so. They, they get a military coup. Uh, can happen down there. So we're already making some progress, I would say, for the Soviets right now. I really wish they would help me out a little bit more. Because we got once we kill this guy, we still have to deal with the other troop, but okay, there we go. Now the Soviets are providing a helping hand, which is nice. So right now we are missing 293 tanks, it's gonna take 800 days. Fighters and support equipment. The port equipment I think is gonna be a little bit more important first. We'll get that going. And, of course, we're going to keep on pushing our way down south. Further and further and further. Cut them off to the Don Kuban Union. Because, again, these guys aren't at war with the Soviets. They're only at war with the Russian Republic. Which is important, too. That's an important distinction. Uh, so, build our factories way back here. Hopefully away from the future front lines. The Tampov has fallen. 
You can see the Canadians over here trying to help them out. So how many provinces? We are four provinces away, roughly, uh, from encircling this army down to the south. We should kill you. Your organization is pretty low. And you are going for the Austrian tree. So that actually probably means our front line is going to be this as well. Which is dangerous. Uh, are you going to march over here? You will. When will you be here? 20 hours. We'll be gone in 7. So I'm going to wait a few more days. You'll be there in 21 hours. You'll be there in 19. So we're going to have to attack you as well. But I think that's okay. If the Soviets help me out, and I do see that they're sending a militia over here to do that. Alf Land has been elected as President of the United States. So that could mean we're only looking at a two-way civil war. Okay, so we got the popular front. Somebody did tell me in the comments that when we solve the language issue, do not make Russian an official language. Uh, I don't know why. I'm just going to take the one that gives us a bigger stability bonus. And we're only looking at two provinces away. And once this is uh, encircled, as we saw once we played as the Commune of France, the, Rush the Soviets will pounce on this. Which is great. So once you're done, st once you're done like attacking me, I would like to continue on my invasion plans. Uh, let our organization build up a little bit more because these guys are still at full, so they're not really going to change too much. And the Soviets are actually pushing their way out, which is lovely. The Russians are pushing their way into the Lash Order, but or Lash Order. Yeah, these three guys are really, really helpful. They're doing a great job. They are sending reinforcements down here, which is a little bit dangerous. Of course, we don't want to get uh, encircled, but I don't think that's going to happen. I'm not too worried about that being uh, the case. Okay, so they are retreating. I'm pretty sure those guys were just trying to ship their way down here anyways. And then we can uh, meet up here in the Don Kuban Union. Don Kuban also has the ability to attack the Russians. We'll see how that goes. And I guess you're going to drive here. Okay, this will be slightly faster if you do this way. You just got to get one of them. Whichever one's empty, basically. So with that, you guys are now encircled. The Soviets should eventually start, you know, pounding this area. I mean, they do technically have a single port of supply, but the Soviets should clean it up relatively easily. Like, how close are the Russians to already capitulating? They're at 93%. So, I mean, they're not close. They could be doing a lot worse for themselves. They're probably going to try to break their way out. And I'm hoping they do not. Because if they break their way out, then we're screwed. Our truck is just dead. And there'll be nothing we can do to save him. Why was that he was assert independence from Germany? That seems pretty good. Don't claim Ukrainian lands. That'd be really bad for us. We're gonna get uh this. 12% stability up. Fate of the monarchy straight to a red hetman. And then we're gonna go for global Ukraine, and then we're not going to take commune cooperation. 
Actually, that's not true. We can take Kami Cooperation, like, right away. It's another 8% ability. We're not going to take Solidarity forever. Until the war between these two will be begun. Because I think I'm going to gain the system a little bit here. Uh, because if we join the Third International before the war breaks out, Germany will deploy troops on our front lines. And that'd be bad. However, if Germany's at war with, uh, with the Commune of France and we're not in the Third International as a faction, they will send all their troops to deal with France. And when we do our decision here to join the Third International, I do not believe that Germany's going to send troops to the, our front lines. Because the Germans will not know that they're about to be at war with us. I believe. I believe that's the case. So when we eventually do join the Commune of France and join the International, while they're fighting each other, uh, this front line should more or less be completely undefended, and we steamroll our way through White Ruthenia and Lithuania and start pushing our way into Prussia. That is my plan. Will it work? That's a great question. But, you know, that's the intent. And hopefully by that point, the Soviet Union will also have one, and hopefully join the International as well and squish the Germans between us. Of course, that's banking on the on one, the Soviets winning, and two, uh, the Soviets actually doing the proper events in order. Because as we know with Russia, is that they're very, very bad at uh, doing the right national focuses uh, to actually help us out. They're they're very good at doing nothing until 1943, long after uh, they they provide they they they're, they're relevant. How much more support equipment do we need? We need 159 days more. But I'll deploy five more infantry divisions, which would be nice. And I'm assuming we cannot send any more volunteers. No, we already have one out of one. Maybe when these guys deploy, we'll be able to send in a second, which would be nice, but I'm not going to bank on that for obvious reasons. Not reliable. So we're going to go for a fate of the monarchy. There is still a chance that when we leave the Reichspact, Germany can declare war on us. But there's also a chance they do not. And I'm taking that chance that they decide to leave us alone. We got two out of two here. Yeah, the Soviets, they, they did what I thought they would do and they cleaned up that little pocket uh, very nicely. Unfortunately, there's really no other easy pockets. Like, you could... Maybe try to do like this, but that's way too far. And also, Finland's doing a good enough job dealing with this on their own. I don't see any way we can effectively utilize the Alash Orda. I mean, if... You've already taken territory. You're going to push claims in... Further in. Panic in Siberia. So there's still a chance the Russian Republic will even declare war on the Japanese. And I would hope that would signal the end of them as a faction, but I don't know if that's going to be the case. I guess we can probably try to push our way here. We've got two cities down here. We're five and one, so that's six points. But I'm hoping that we don't need to push too much past the Urals. Or that I can at least give the Soviets enough of a uh, a head start. Okay, I can deploy an extra troop. Do I want to deploy the tanks? No, definitely not. So I'm going to send you as another volunteer division. Send them down here. Kind of, you know, just a little bit of extra support. We, I think we should be able to combine them once they're in the same kind of group. But that might not be the case. I mean, is there anybody else you'd want to go to war with? Like, okay, no, Indochina is definitely dead. It's too late for them. Is there anybody else who goes to war with uh, Germany? Not that I can think of. Both the Rifleman Union.
keep on pushing forward here. Soviet should take control of that soon as well. Uh, 939. No, still 37. Let's get radio. I think they deploy Petrograd, which is a little bit of a shame, because it'd be really nice if I could just walk from here to there. Also, how many Civil Wars is there going to be? Just... Okay, so it's a three-way CSA, American Union State, and the United States. We'll see how that plays off. How, how that plays out for them. And revolt in China has been defeated, unfortunately. So can I get you guys to combine? No, unfortunately not. You have to be separate. But just make your way down south as fast as humanly possible. I mean, I could try to push my way up. And get us around like that. Like, just surround more Russian troops. Like, that could work. We got reinforcements coming over here now. I sent our true troops. We basically, slowly push away like one, two, three, four, five circle in here. Capture these guys. Because the encirclements should prove their weight in gold if we can pull them off effectively. And also, it allows me to move in one extra tile. At least until Soviet reinforcements arrive. It already seems like they're doing a pretty decent job of. And hopefully, maybe we can send in a third division at some point in the future as well. Also, we could send an air... Volunteers. Do I have planes? I, I actually do not know. Yes, yeah, I have 103 planes. I'm going to send in some aircraft as well. Okay, so now that you're over here, we're going to move up a little bit. Yucatan. It's fine. Don't worry about it. You probably gotta go one, two, three, four. Or one, two, three. Probably one, two, three. One, two, three, like this works a little bit better. Okay, CSA, Civil American Civil War has begun. Keep pushing our way through. Uh, another crisis. Our government decision to uh, divide the property of the Kulaks has led to a second crisis among the farmers. The collectivist attempts have ended in total failure. With agricultural years from the new collective farms, uh, less than the small holdings they've replaced. Um, okay, five sensibility. Then we'll just do the collectivization here, which removes the penalty. If only they thought about that earlier. I mean, so we'll do fate of the monarchy in nine more days. Should be good to go, but I think this is going to be a good time. To end this episode. So thanks everybody for watching. My name is Anthem. If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. Now, Joey, throw some down. Want to see more? Subscribe and goodbye.